Uh, thanks everyone for joining the session today uh, after a break. I uh, hope you had a nice break. So uh, we are going to start the session now. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Sumit Mathur, uh, Engineering Manager in Intuit of Traffic Team. Uh, and with me, uh, I have Shushant. He is a Traffic Lead in Intuit. And our topic uh, is Scaling Service Mesh, uh, Self-Service Beyond 300 Clusters. So uh, we are going to uh, talk about what is scaling means here, what is self-service means here, what is that uh, 300 cluster. So we are going to break down all of this uh, in next 30 minutes. Uh, let's get started what is Intuit is and what we have done. So Intuit is a, a fintech company uh, based out of US and it has uh, accounting and tax products. Uh, and uh, we believe in open source and some of our uh, open source contributions are like Argo, Admiral, and uh, at the end we are uh, end user customers also like Kubernetes, Istio, Prometheus. Uh, this is the scale at uh, which we operate, uh, like more than 300 plus Kubernetes clusters, 16,000 plus namespaces, more than 2,000 microservices, so it's like a factory of microservices that we have, and then more than thousands of teams with 10,000 developers who are using our platforms. And uh, we are on the journey of a modern SaaS platform and building a lot of abstraction uh, so that we ease the life of the developers. Uh, from the traffic team, uh, this is our uh, contribution to the Istio community, the Admiral. Uh, you can check uh, more about Admiral on the GitHub link. But at a high level, uh, Admiral allows us for the cross-cluster communication and the service discovery in service mesh world. Uh, let's, uh, before we go uh, deep dive in like what's the today's topic and everything, I just want to make sure like uh, we all understand uh, some of the basic terms of traffic. So may I know uh, how many of you know API Gateway? Good. Uh, do you know uh, what Istio is? Nice. Do you know what service mesh is? Thanks. So I see a good amount of audience who knows these terminologies and there are a few who don't know. So let's uh, start with that understanding those basic terminologies of traffic and uh, so this is our agenda where we are going to cover what is API Gateway, what is Service Mesh, what are the common functionalities like rate limiting, traffic dialing, what's our problem uh, statement, why we are here, why you are here, and then the solutioning part of it, and what's here in the roadmap for us. So uh, let's look at uh, what API Gateway is. So uh, consider uh, a developer who is developing the API, is writing the business logic for your company, uh, and his core uh, uh, work is just to write an API which can generate the revenue for the company. And as he develops the APIs, they get their first client, and they share the API specs, uh, all the authentication mechanism, and it works well, no issues with that. But as the spectrum of the business grows, you get your more clients, like desktop client, mobile client, browser clients, uh, even the applications within your own ecosystem, or a third party applications which use your capability uh, to develop a new capability. So now if you look at this, the developer who was developing the business logic, he has to take care of a lot more things now. Like how the authentication will work for all these different kinds of clients. How the authorization will work. What if one of the clients start misusing the uh, APIs and they overload you or DOS attack you? So how do I do the rate limiting? How does the traffic dialing will happen in case uh, the users, uh, like you know, in case your business expands and you want to dial the traffic depending on the HTTP APIs or the type of the clients? So that's where uh, your API gateway comes in picture. It takes care uh, of, like you know, uh, uh, handling all those um, uh, operations like uh, traffic dialing, rate limiting, authentication, authorization. So all your clients connects to the API gateway. It takes care of all those uh, things and then forward the request to your backend service. So that's what uh, API Gateway at high level. And uh, in Intuit, uh, we have been developing API Gateway for last 10 years due to our customs uh, requirements. So we are not using the uh, whatever there is uh, open in the market, but we have developed it over last uh, 10 to 12 years, our own API Gateway, which take care of all these uh, like, you know, authentication, authorization, rate limiting, and whatnot. 
So uh, with this understanding of API Gateway, let's uh, cover what service mesh is. So uh, in Kubernetes, uh, we know like this is generally the uh, typical architecture where uh, you have a service deployed in one cluster, communicating to another service uh, in the same cluster or to a different clusters, right? Now, uh, if you have to get the same capability that we have discussed about the API gateway, you need something like this, where your service will communicate, like for example, in this case, S1, communicates to service S3 via an API gateway. Now, if you see something uh, weird here is, your service is going out of the cluster to a different uh, VPC or to a different networking zone, and then going back to a Kubernetes cluster, and all that is happening within your own ecosystem boundary. So this is not what we really want in the Kubernetes world. We have a con concept of pods, containers, so what we really want is something like this. Each pod should get their own, uh, you know, a mini API gateway which take care of all those things that we have talked about. And uh, in service mesh world, the capability has been provided by Istio. So Istio takes care of all your traffic management capabilities and uh, it allows you for service-to-service -service communication. And that's what we call as service mesh. So uh, with these two uh, terminologies being clarified, like what is gateway, what is service mesh, let's go and understand some of the core capabilities that they provide so that uh, we can build the story that uh, we are, for which we are here. Let's consider uh, the rate limiting. What is rate limiting is about? So uh, rate limiting means uh, how much transactions are allowed to be served for your service. So for example, let's look uh, with an example. In this case, a service which is uh, backend by uh, API Gateway or Service Mesh, it allows only one transaction per minute. So how does it work? So at the beginning of the uh, second, you get your first request. It is within the limit. So what will happen is, the request will get forwarded to the backend service. Now after some time, you get another request. Let's say at the 30th second, you get a second request. At this point of time, what gateway or service mesh will do is, it will reject it because that's crossing your threshold. So that is what we call at a high level, rate limiting. Now uh, let's understand what is traffic dialing uh, in our use case is. Uh, let's look at a client and a service. So a client is connecting to a service which is deployed uh, in a Kubernetes over, uh, let's say deployment one, and all the request is going to that deployment. This works well uh, when your uh, service is, is small, but as your uh, business requirement goes, what exactly happens is you shard your application depending on the use cases like either HTTP verbs or uh, your, uh, depending on your applications, right? So in reality, it's like this, where your service is deployed uh, over a multiple uh, deployments, right? So the scenarios can be like this, where your clients are connecting to your application uh, over like, for example, in this case, get v1 connects to deployment two, update calls goes to deployment one, and get v2 calls goes to deployment three. That's how you shard your application, right? So that's what we call as uh, traffic dialing. And if you look, uh, one more thing here is, what we really want is, whenever a user makes a call to the service, before it, re uh, before it exits the uh, NY proxy or the Istio proxy on the client side, it should know, okay, where it has to go, right? So your traffic dialing really, really need to happen on the client side, because if it reaches on the service side, you can do that, but that's a costly operation, right? You need to redirect, keep on redirecting the request, right? So that's what we call as uh, traffic dialing. So now, uh, with uh, basic understanding of gateway, service mesh, rate limiting, and traffic dialing, let's understand, like, what is the complexity uh, that happens uh, when you have a scale of 300 plus clusters running in the production? Uh, what can you know? Uh, what can go wrong? You know, when these capabilities uh, work at a scale. So uh, typically in Intuit, like uh, whenever we start a service, whenever we develop a new microservices, we start with one region, and then uh, as the business grows, we expand it to the second region, and uh, typically like uh, all the services uh, are behind the API gateway. They take the traffic from API gateway, and we call it as not south traffic. So we know, like, you know, any traffic which is coming over an internet will go through an API gateway, and we call it as not south. Now let's consider a scenario where uh, you have a service within, which is within your own ecosystem. So how does uh, this communication will happen? 
if you remember few side back i talked about service mesh so any service which is deployed within your own ecosystem boundary uh, in the kubernetes cluster you use a service mesh so this is a typical architecture in intuit for any of the services that we have any internet traffic comes over an api gateway any traffic within the intuit boundaries uh, generally goes through a service mesh now uh, let's configure uh, the rate limiting in this architecture so we have our service deployed with this architecture and if i have to uh, deploy a rate limiting for north south traffic where should i deploy the traffic for uh, the rate limiting for north south traffic it is at api gateway right so you configure the rate limiting for region 1 you configure the rate limiting for your region 2 and your north south rate limiting is done now let's look at what should i do for uh, east west traffic where do i need to configure the rate limiting for east west traffic it is at service cluster so you configure your rate limiting on the cluster similarly on the region you configure and this works really well for your east west traffic but if you see what we have done is we have configured the rate limiting at gateway we have configured the rate limiting at service mesh so how do we keep them in sync right that's a great uh, that's a real problem now uh, in our case like uh, where we have started our journey uh, like you know 10 to 12 years back uh, with only api gateway until now we adopted the istio there were many services where which have started uh, configuring rate limiting at gateway then at service mesh so we have a great challenge like you know all these 2000 services which are in running in production how to keep this in sync so this is uh, one of our uh, problem statement let's keep uh, this problem statement uh, and let's look how to do the traffic dialing again uh, going back to our uh, deployment architecture so uh, where should i configure the traffic dialing for not south traffic it is at api gateway because that's where your internet traffic is coming so you configure the traffic dialing at api gateway but what about uh, east west traffic where i need to configure for east west traffic if you remember uh, i just talked about a few slides back what the traffic dialing is and where exactly we need to configure so the traffic dialing needs to happen at client side because if the request reaches on the service side then there is no point of doing the dialing right we really want to handle it on the client side itself before the request exit the istio proxy and that's how you configure your east west or traffic dialing so this looks uh, very good like you know you work with your client you configure all their uh, like you know uh, yamls uh, with all the traffic dialing rules that you really want according to their timeline and it works perfectly well if you have just one client but now what happens if you have hundreds of such client in our case like you know a given service can have hundreds of clients who are using this and they are spread across the clusters so you can have something scenarios like this where your clients are running on hundreds of clusters connecting to your service so what you need to do again you work with your second client get their timeline you are on their mercy whether they are available and you configure your traffic dialing on client to but what happens at this during this phase you are really dependent on them and that makes you frustrated like you cannot scale your application because you have a dependency on them and so forth so you work with your third client fourth client and at the end you are really really frustrated and annoyed like oh this is not what we really want at the scale of like you know 300 plus clusters what we really want is something a different thing which can help us in doing all these things uh, seamlessly irrespective of dependency on the clients so let me call sushant to discuss the solutioning part of it yeah. uh thanks sumit for uh, setting the context for this uh, for our talk today uh, they are explaining us the basics so let's get started so as sumit said we have we're going to discuss two problems uh, in our uh, service mesh adoption with api gateway Uh, that we already had uh, so first thing yes service mesh config distribution and reconciliation uh, at scale so we deploy istod in every single cluster so that means we have to uh, the the virtual the the client side configurations really have to be distributed in every single cluster right so we have control istio control plane running in every single cluster so now the problem is if i have a service um 300 different clients hosted on 300 different clusters let's say 
it's a pain to really go work with everybody to uh, distribute the configurations and it's uh, a drag on our developer velocity. So the second problem is, uh, again, as uh, Sumit mentioned, we have an API gateway which we have developed over the last decade and we've kept improving it. Uh, but now service mesh is much more recent, right? So, um, and it solves a completely different set of traffic. So the east-west traffic, API gateway solves the north-south north -south traffic. So any configuration, be uh, rate limiting, as I said, or traffic dialing has to be done on both the sides and they all have to be kept in sync. There should not be any drift, right? So imagine thousands of uh, developers at a company doing uh, working on this, there is going to be some drift and some incidents going, uh, that are going to be caused because of this. Uh, so we'll walk you through our story of how we uh, went about uh, solving this uh, problem now. So there are many different ways you can solve this. Uh, uh, we'll, so this is one of the ways uh, that we've solved it at Intuit. So let's tackle the config distribution uh, problem in uh, service mesh first. To solve this, we introduced a new component called uh, Navic. So let's use the same example that uh, Sumit um, started us with. So the service is hosted on uh, two different uh, clusters in two different regions. We introduced Navic. Navic is running in a, a global control plane. So this means it's not running in every single cluster. We have it running in one cluster in West, uh, in, in region one. And um, we also have DR uh, solution, which we are not going to uh, talk about today. We, the, Navic also runs in the other region as well. So this component Navic is monitoring the API servers of every single cluster, right? So, and it also knows where a particular service is hosted. So in this case, it's really these two clusters, right? So how does it get to know? We use annotations. So we have introduced an annotation called identifier. If the value is the same, then Navic thinks that, hey, it's the same service which is hosted on these two different clusters. And uh, yes. And what we have also done is we introduced a new custom object. Uh, we talk about abstractions going forward now. So this is the first abstraction that we introduced, which is a traffic config custom object. Um, and uh, this is really used by uh, the owners of the service, in this case, the service one, to control um, the runtime behavior of the service mesh. Right? So again, Navic is continuously monitoring changes to this custom object. Um, and uh, the config uh, looks something like this. So you have options for updating, rate limiting, uh, traffic dialing, timeouts, cores, and a bunch of other things. So let's say uh, the owner of the service wants to change uh, the rate limit of uh, the service from 50 to 75 TPS. Navic immediately identifies that, hey, it's a config change that's done on that service. It knows where the service is hosted, that these two different uh, clusters, and uh, what it's going to do now is it's going to call the API server of uh, region one of that particular cluster and write um, a particular config. Uh, well, what is this real config? So at Intuit, we have written our own um, custom uh, rate limiting uh, filters. So this rate limiting filter now has to be injected into uh, the filter chain at a particular location on for of Envoy filter chain, right? So the way to do this uh, in Istio is using a custom object called Envoy filter. So this essentially, Navic is generating the Envoy filter and uh, that necessary configuration, now it's updating the value from 50 to 75 and it's uh, yeah, writing it to both these clusters. And that's it, right? So what we've done with this is we have abstracted uh, the service level configurations. So the service could be hosted on two clusters, or 50 clusters or 100 clusters. The owner of the service doesn't have to go, you know, update the configurations across. They just have to work with one uh, custom object in one uh, global control plane. And um, Navic is going to distribute it across and make sure that there's no config uh, issues, right? This is this configuration, Envoy filter that is generated is using an automation. Uh, so there, there will not be uh, scope for any config issues. So let's go to the second part of, uh, second problem that um, uh, Sumit brought up, which is the client side config distribution, right? So 
So to do this, we really need a way to model what are the different clients that a particular service has. Uh, so we are again, uh, we again contribute to Admiral as well. So we've used the same custom object uh, called dependencies that we use in Admiral. So what, uh, yeah, again, Navic is continuously monitoring uh, these dependencies. This is what uh, the dependency custom object uh, would look like. It says, hey, the name is client. That's the name of identifier uh, of our client. And it says, hey, I'm dependent on service one, service two, and service three. Uh, sick of this discussion, we have service one here. So uh, let's say, yeah, uh, yeah, we are in, service one has five different dependency uh, clients. Then we have five dependency objects. Let's introduce uh, the client into this discussion. So we have uh, the client one hosted on these two clusters. Again, how does Navic know about it? Yes, using the annotations, it's monitoring those clusters. So now it knows where are all the clients hosted. At this point, let's say the service owner of uh, service one comes in and says, hey, I want to change the traffic that is sent by this client. Uh, I want to uh, move all the get to west and uh, reads to east or some any, any of those changes. Essentially, the config distribution has to happen on the client side. At this point, again, there's a config change. Navic gets to know about it. And yes, it's going to write. It knows where the client is really hosted in which clusters is it hosted in, it's going to call the API server of um, those clusters to distribute the history custom objects. So in case of traffic dialing, we have not built our own custom filters. We are using um, the virtual service custom object that's provided by uh, Istio. We just configure the right values um, and we write uh, to the particular API server uh, in question. In this, uh, the two clusters are getting updated. So, so if we really look at it, we were able to, um, what happened? Okay. So we were able to abstract the service side changes as well as the client side changes as a service, a user, a developer uh, in Intuit, at Intuit, if they have, you know, deployments across services, clients across services, all of that is abstracted by, by this. So one byproduct that we also got from this is now we can also handle breaking uh, API changes or um, you know YAMLs that, that keep changing. The custom object structure can change uh, across uh, Istio uh, releases. So the mesh admins are also happy about this, right? Otherwise, if we had to end the decision of uh, asking all our users, thousands of developers, to just use the custom objects provided by Istio directly and breaking API chain. Let's say you want to change the API from V1 to V2 or some structure has to change in the YAML, then essentially we have to work with everybody at um, Intuit, right? So that's uh, not what we wanted. And now we are able to, since everybody is working with the abstractions, that is uh, the virtual, uh, the traffic config object and the dependency, we are able to transparently uh, roll out any breaking um, Istio changes uh, as well across clusters. So at this point of time, uh, let's uh, start talking about the second big problem uh, that we had, which is how to control the config drift between the API gateway that we already had and our service mesh. As Sumit said, we built our API gateway over the last uh, decade, improved it over the decade. So we are not using the new age uh, API gateways uh, that's there. But now how do we keep configurations in sync? If you look at it, finally, API gateway or service mesh, it's the same set of pods that are finally going to get the request, right? So we wanted um, a solution to keep these configurations in sync. Let's see how is that done. So this is uh, how uh, the self-service is currently done um, at, uh, at Intuit. We have a developer portal where thousands of our engineers um, manage any requirement related to their uh, development needs. You can create uh, new namespaces, uh, new AWS accounts, and also configure our API gateway. So the way this config is done is using a YAML. Again, the YAML you can use to change course, change uh, rate limiting configurations, change traffic dialing, anything that you need. Um, and if you really look at it, 
this uh, this is uh, this is where the inspiration came for uh, the traffic config that we spoke about in the previous slide so, so when we went through this uh, exercise of uh, defining hey what should the self service experience for service mesh uh, should be like uh, we thought hey let's not introduce a completely new yaml and educate thousands of engineers at into it again um, this yaml was already used um, for the last 5 6 years to configure api gateway folks were already um, familiar with this yaml so we decided hey let's use the same uh, yaml and add new fields into this if it's relevant for service mesh so and we also what we did is uh, we went one step ahead and uh, looked at what are the commonly used features on our api gateway um, and we abstracted that into a simple uh, ui as well right so any changes into this ui finally gets reconciled uh, into the yaml that we spoke about um, and all of this gets stored in a config store and um, we have an api gateway which uh, essentially uses this configuration so let's say somebody again change the rate limit from 50 to 75 tps this config change has to be synced up all the way to api gateway but uh, you may ask hey somebody wakes up in the middle of the night makes a config change how does the api gateway get to know about this yeah we used a standard um, eventing mechanism for this we have api gateway um, being a uh, as a consumer to a messaging service so any change uh, we push a message to the messaging service um and api gateway syncs the latest config so that's how any config change uh, is uh, distributed all the way to the api gateway in a matter of um, you know uh, 12 to 15 seconds so at this point let's see how we can um, unify both the worlds the api gateway world and uh, the service mesh uh, world so we continue to keep um, the developer portal be the place for all the self service uh, for this unified api gateway and service mesh and we the same yaml and the ui was continued to be the place for uh, the self service at this point let's uh, merge both the worlds right so the left panel that you see is uh, api gateway self service and the right side that you see is uh, the right panel is the service mesh uh, ecosystem that we have so navig is the component as we discussed which um, abstracts all the istio configs it's the one that's uh generating all the istio custom objects and distributing to all the clusters so but there is a problem right so we spoke about dependencies and traffic config yaml that's there so somebody has to generate and modify this we did not want thousands of developers getting access to this updating the uh, the yamls no that's not what we wanted so we really wanted this to be auto generated uh so we wrote an adapter which again um looks at the yaml that is uh, responsible for api gateway uh, any change in there it gets to know about it and uh, reconciles those two yamls uh, that we spoke about those two custom objects that we spoke about so again we follow the same uh, mechanism somebody wants to change a uh, rate limit a message is uh, push to uh, the messaging uh, platform that we have the api gateway gets it now the adapter is also a consumer to this messaging service and now it knows that hey something changed the value of rate limit has changed from 50 to 75 uh, let's say tps and uh, it is it, kn it knows about it now it makes a call to the config store and reconciles uh, these objects the traffic config and uh, dependencies but now since this value has changed navig gets to know about it since a custom object the traffic config is edited by the adapter navig gets to know that hey the rate limit has changed from 50 to 75 and navig also knows that hey it's the service one which got modified it's going to generate those envoy filters that we spoke about into this two uh, beautiful clusters that we have here so the end goal is a users are really happy right so they just got a text box where they edited the rate limit let's say from 50 to 75 and they were able to control this and distribute this behavior across two different runtime environments api gateway and uh, service mesh um, very easily right so again let's quickly recap what did we just achieve yes we were able to keep api gateway and service mesh in sync 
Um, we are able to distribute configs across 300 clusters in less than 10 seconds, uh, but we want to improve this number uh, uh, going forward. An easy way to distribute custom objects across large number because of abstraction. The, but the most important win for us is the increased developer velocity. It applies to all our users as well as the mesh admins that we have. So when we started uh, the, our mesh journey, I think we were one of the early adopters of service mesh um, five, six years back. Initially, we asked our users to look at the Istio documentation, use those custom objects and directly configure it in their clusters. Guess what? They misconfigured it and the entire cluster went down. Along with it, since we are a multi-cluster system, uh, the misconfigured value got copied over to multiple clusters. And you know, multiple clusters went down in a non-prod environment. Um, so that's when we really decided, hey, look, uh, we don't want to get into this um, uh, business of having a service users uh, authoring configurations based on the Istio documentation. So uh, we want to take all the responsibility of uh, abstracting the feature. By we, we mean the service mesh platform team. Um, and thousands of engineers at Intuit don't really have to go through the documentation uh, for Istio. And uh, yeah, have also a possible chance of misconfiguring. Since we already had a self-service for API Gateway, they just use that um, and it's almost abstracted from them that, hey, they also have a east-west uh, configuration and a north-south configuration. They have a unified traffic configuration which takes care of both east-west and north-south. And the last point, uh, we also spoke about it. It's, uh, yeah, we are able to handle breaking CRD changes uh, or yeah, making Istio changes, doing upgrades uh, transparently. So the mesh team is extremely happy because they have uh, full authority to update configurations transparently. So what are the next steps for this? Um, yes. So we want to handle feedback automatically for write operations across clusters. At this point, um, uh, if write on one of the clusters fails, we really rely on uh, logging and alerting to um, let the on-call know that something is broken and let me go update it. We're working on designs to automatically heal our ecosystem um, when something like this breaks. This can happen uh, due to network issues, but we want to be resilient um, to any such changes and automatically fix these things. We, we are improving observability and uh, we are also working on adding um, the most commonly used features uh, provided by Istio uh, in Navic. So we are almost at the end of uh, KubeCon, but I uh, just wanted to share that these are some of the talks uh, my colleagues at Intuit have presented at uh, KubeCon and also um, at uh, the co-located events. So we have open sourced uh, Navic uh, this week, and uh, this is a link for it. Uh, so this entire slide deck is available, uh, sorry, the QR code is for uh, uh, for the feedback, so the, uh, we, we, have, we don't have the QR code for Navic, but it's completely available in the SCED uh, app. This entire slide deck is available. Uh, we have uh, open source Navic, and uh, please feel free to check out. Please we request you to check out. Try it. If you have any new use cases that you want us to handle, you can. Uh, uh, if you want to contribute, you can reach out to us on this emails or email, or um, yeah, you can reach out to us on um, on GitHub. And if you also want to check out, hey, what is Intuit doing uh, about open source, you can please uh, scan this code on the left and uh, yeah, follow uh, Intuit's open source work as well. Thank you. So at this point, um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone uh, to be patient uh, uh, with us uh, when we uh, share our traffic story with you. And we also want to thank the organizers for helping us uh, provide this platform, um, again, to share our story with you. Thanks everyone.